To him, it makes sense that that is infrastructure because he sees you, the individual, as merely a cog in the machine. You're just one more brick in the wall. That's how he sees it, because he says bricks and mortar, that's infrastructure. Humans, also infrastructure. Same thing, right? That's how he views people. He doesn't think of you as having individual rights. He doesn't think of you as an individual at all. You only have value as it pertains to the collective. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. So our daily dose is stupid for the evening. Apparently, words just don't mean things anymore. You know, for a long time throughout human history, we've had language. And generally speaking, while there has been some discrepancy and some words that can have multiple definitions, we generally agree that words have a set meaning. When we're speaking to one another, we don't just kind of assume all the time that there, there is no set meaning to these things, that they uh, constantly change and shift with the wind. And in mid-conversation, a word can mean one thing and then mean something completely other, uh, completely different the next, sec the, the next time that we're, we're speaking. Generally speaking, that, that's how we communicate with one another, but apparently the Democrats have just decided, um, no, words just mean pretty much whatever the crap we want them to mean. And a great illustration of this comes from Senator Kristen Gillibrand. You remember she ran for president for like five seconds before she left? I, I call her Diet Hillary because she's basically just a slightly younger version of Hillary Clinton, which, I mean, you know, being anything under the age of 80 would be slightly younger than Hillary Clinton. Uh, but anyway, Kristen Gillibrand rolls this out. Paid leave is infrastructure. Child care is infrastructure. Caregiving is infrastructure. What? No, that that's not infrastructure. Those are things, and they may be things that you like, but they are not, in fact infrastructure and and this whole thing comes on the heels of them trying to pass this infrastructure bill and and one of the common criticisms that it is faced and rightfully so is that there's actually not a whole lot of infrastructure spending in this bill and so what they're saying is all the other things contained within this bill which is basically just a giant payoff and a, a democrat wish list all those things actually are infrastructure because we say they're infrastructure but uh, back here in reality if you'll join me for a moment we actually do still have a language that has words with set definitions. That's why we have a dictionary. And that's why this, this definition of infrastructure comes from dictionary.com. You can see there's a few of them. One, the basic underlying framework or features of a system or organization. Two, the fundamental facilities and systems serving a country or a city or area as transportation or communication systems, power plants, and schools. And then three, the military installations of a country. Now, I would even say that schools are kind of iffy as far as infrastructure. I mean, they're certainly a government entity, but they're not necessarily infrastructure in the strictest sense of the word. I guess I guess they're buildings, but that's not necessarily infrastructure. But nonetheless, you know, we can parse words here a little bit with dictionary definition. But even given the, I would say, somewhat generous definition from dictionary.com, those definitions still do not work with what Kristen Gillibrand was saying, that child care and, and caring for kids and all that stuff, that, that's not, not infrastructure. Not in any, by anyone's definition, is that infrastructure in any way. But I, I guess apparently now infrastructure just means things that Democrats like. So I, I guess if a Democrat likes it, that makes it infrastructure somehow. I don't know. But that seems to be the standard that we have drawn for ourselves. But this is, this is common. This is something that it really should surprise nobody because this is how Democrats operate. This is how they work. Basically what they do and, and the way that they try to make this whole thing function is they know that they can't win debates based on the merits of their argument, so they have to constantly change the words because it's the only way they can win the argument. When you say, 
um, your infrastructure plan has very little to do with infrastructure. They're like, um, no, it's all infrastructure. That's how they work it. Because it's the only way that it makes any sense. If you just redefine infrastructure to mean everything that Democrats like, well, then there's a lot of infrastructure in that bill. And this is something that they've done for a very long time. We were actually talking about it in the way that the media just immediately snapped to right away the second that this thing was being rebranded, that instead of packing the courts, it became expanding the courts, which sounds a lot less sinister and underhanded and probably polls a lot better with people. And so they moved to expanding the courts as opposed to packing the courts. Uh, Medicare for all, the Affordable Care Act, we, we know these examples. Undocumented worker instead of illegal immigrant or refugee, they, they'll refer to them as refugees. In fact, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez got very upset by people even saying illegal immigrant or um, now I think even undocumented worker is kind of going by the wayside. Even the, the woke versions of these terms are going away. And uh, they, she doesn't like the word insurgents, which is really funny. She thinks that somehow um, surge and insurgents are the same thing. But when people say surge at the border, they don't mean an insurgents. But regardless, that's that's apparently her uh, her way to do that. They, they did the same thing with Dreamer, you know, with Dreamer. They just redefined anybody under the age of 18 that was illegal. He's Well, he's not a, an unaccompanied minor and he's not an illegal immigrant. He's a Dreamer. Like, I guess American kids don't dream. Like, I don't know if that's how that works. Or another one that they are really good at is uh, instead of gun control, because eventually gun control became toxic originally. I mean, it was just a Second Amendment violation, and they changed that to gun control. And when gun control didn't work anymore, they changed it to gun safety. See, because gun safety law sounds a lot better than gun control law, because everyone knows what gun control actually means and then they did the same thing with like universal background checks even though background checks are already universal what they mean by that is specific like background checks on people that are just trading as individual citizens uh, ghost gun is another one that we talked about a lot last week is that when, when you say it's a ghost gun it sounds a lot scarier so let's call them ghost guns or assault weapons that's another one that they just made up that actually means nothing so uh, and pro-choice, of course, is probably the most egregious and the uh, most oft-used one that we're pro-choice. Well, except for the choice that the baby makes. We're for taking away all of his choices so that we can have our own choices. But we're pro-choice. Yay. That's, I guess, how they operate is they can't win arguments, so they have to constantly redefine the terms. And then, of course, we're familiar with the way that they just basically, if everything that we like is infrastructure, everything we dislike is racist. We don't like voter ID laws, so they're racist. Well, how are they racist? Uh, we don't know, but they're definitely racist. We we definitely don't like that. Well, what about laws cracking down on voter fraud? Well, that's racist. Uh, what about laws that would prevent Muslim refugees being taken into the interior? Well, that's racist now. Uh, everything is racist, as my friend Stu Gear would point out uh, with that catchy song. Everything is racist. That Everything is racist, guys. Everything that we don't like is racist. Everything we do like is infrastructure. You see, they found out that the American people, infrastructure polls really well with them, and so most people like infrastructure. Most people don't like racism, for good reason. And so if we just call everything that we like infrastructure and we call everything that we dislike racist, well, then people will like all the things we like and dislike all the things that we dislike. And, you know, it's sad, but unfortunately, that strategy isn't terrible. I mean, it's gained some traction, and some people actually believe for example, that certain people that are not racist, or there's no evidence to suggest they are racist, are because of what the Democrats have said. And I guess if you can buy that, you can buy that universal health care is somehow infrastructure. I don't know. But it's not just Kristen Gillibrand that's pointing this out. And by the way, even though she didn't say health care is infrastructure, that was said by the next person that we're going to take a look at. This is Bernie Sanders explaining all of this on MSNBC. We talk about infrastructure. Of course, we're talking about roads and bridges. Water is a big deal. Water systems, wastewater plants. But we've got to take a broad look at what infrastructure means, human infrastructure for ordinary people. Human infrastructure means housing. You got a half a million people in this country who are homeless. You got 19 million households who are spending 50 percent 
of their limited incomes on housing. We need to build housing. When I talk about infrastructure, it means if a worker, mom and dad are going to work, they have the right to know that their kids are in decent childcare. That's infrastructure. Infrastructure is having the best educated workforce in the world. That means all of our kids should have the ability to get a higher education, not leave school deeply in debt. It means that we need a healthy society. Our life expectancy is 40th in the world because we are the only major country not to guarantee health care to all people. So I think as a nation, we've got to take a very broad look at what we mean by infrastructure. It's physical infrastructure, obviously, bricks and mortar. It is human infrastructure. And now is the time to create millions of jobs addressing all of the needs impacting the middle class and working families of this country. Well, this should surprise really nobody, because remember, Bernie Sanders is the guy that's saying, we'll just rebrand something that people don't like the sound of, socialism, and we'll call it democratic socialism, and that'll make it all good and wonderful and rainbow sunshine. And uh, we'll just say that we're going to do what Denmark and other Scandinavian countries are doing, even though you know they have virtually no regulations on businesses and have really low corporate taxes. We'll just pretend as though that's a democratic socialism, and that'll make it much more palatable and better. And so Bernie Sanders is not above playing these word games, and we see that he's at it again. The infrastructure just basically means whatever I want it to mean. And so I'll just redefine the terms to mean, you know, child care or health care or housing for people. That That's all infrastructure. No, it's not. It's roads and bridges. And here's the thing. Why do people like infrastructure? Why are Democrats so tempted to just redefine everything to infrastructure? I mean, as I've already said, it's because people like it. People generally desire government to do infrastructure. It's one of the very few things that they actually do want them to do. And I think that's very telling. Even people that tend to be moderate are on the left. They still see things like infrastructure as the primary thing that government is supposed to do. Basically, as long as they handle things like crime and at the federal level handle things like foreign threats and they have roads and bridges and, and all of that other stuff that allows them to get where they need to go, that's really all most people care about. Uh, you could maybe throw schools in there depending on who it is and depending on whether or not they've got kids. Uh, you know, some people really care about that. Some people don't care about it as much. But regardless, that's another thing. But by and large... Most people just want infrastructure. They just want government to handle that kind of stuff and, and just sort of ignore everything else. I, I wish that people were more like that and then there'd be more libertarians out there because that's one of the few things that most libertarians would agree that there is some legitimate role for the government having their hand in that. But ultimately, it does speak to the idea that Americans primarily want government to do infrastructure. And what's funny is... The Democrats have realized this, but they're using the word infrastructure as a Trojan horse to shovel in a whole bunch of agenda items that they really like and prefer and, and would like to pass. But they're doing it under the guise of infrastructure. Now, in the past, they've just done this kind of quietly. Like, they would shove all this stuff into an infrastructure bill, call it an infrastructure bill, and then when people, you know, made note of, wait a second, most of that stuff isn't infrastructure. They would either add more stuff that is infrastructure to kind of cover up the fact that all that other pork barrel spinning and whatnot is still in the bill, or, and what they would they would also try to do this, they would just kind of ignore it and let the media cover for them. Now they're going full hog and basically letting it hang out as like, yeah, it's it's all infrastructure, it's whatever. We're they're lying to your face because they think and, and they know that their buddies in the media will cover for them. In fact, Al Vashti, who was conducting this interview with Bernie Sanders, immediately after he said that, he's like, well, that was a very compelling argument. And I'm sitting there like, did you watch the same clip that I just did? Because I didn't see anything that convinced me that that was infrastructure. Not one. He didn't make one argument that I thought made any sense when it came to why that is infrastructure. But the media is going to continue to cover for them. But to the larger point, I want you to think about this. Because we can make jokes about the way that they've just redefined infrastructure to mean anything they want, and we'll have a good chuckle out of it. I'm enjoying it, too. But dig down to what Bernie Sanders really meant there. What's the meaning behind this? When he says human infrastructure, 
And he says, well, you've got your regular infrastructure, which is brick and mortar, and you have your human infrastructure, which is just, you know, kind of part of the system like bricks and mortar and roads and bridges. And it's, it's really all the same thing. Why is Bernie Sanders comfortable with saying that? What is he implying there? You see, to Bernie Sanders, there is no difference. The man is a communist. He's a collectivist. He believes in the collective and in the government and not in the individual. And so to him, it makes sense that government would be involved in things like providing your health care, providing your food, providing your housing, providing your child care. To him, it makes sense that that is infrastructure because he sees you, the individual, as merely a cog in the machine. You're just one more brick in the wall. That's how he sees it, because he says bricks and mortar, that's infrastructure. Humans, also infrastructure. Same thing, right? That's how he views people. He doesn't think of you as having individual rights. He doesn't think of you as an individual at all. You only have value as it pertains to the collective. Your contributions to society are the only thing that give you value. Your relationship to the collective is how you have value. You're not an individual. You're just a number. You're just one more cog in the machine. And he's the mechanic, and he's going to fix you and tell you how to run. And because of that, the government will provide you with things like food and housing as long as you need it to be productive. And the second that you're not productive, they pull all those things back. Because when the government gives it to you, the government can take it away from you. When the government is the one that is giving you rights, which is the way that he sees it, the government has the right to take those rights away if all of a sudden you having those rights threatens the government or just makes you less productive. In his mind, that's the way society is supposed to work. You're not a person. You're a piece. You're a unit. You're an asset. You're not a human. And that's why he can say terms like human infrastructure and be perfectly fine with it. This is the way the man thinks. You are nothing more than a piece of livestock or a part of a bridge or something. To him, that's who you are. And I don't think that he meant to articulate it in that way, but that's exactly what the underlying principle is with him saying that and being able to say it with a straight face and not think about it in that term. Because that's how collectivists view everyone. Your value only comes to you through the community. You don't have value as an individual. You don't have individual rights. Your opinions, your thoughts, none of that matters on the individual level. You only matter as you relate to the larger community as a whole. You can hear them talk about stuff like this in their language every single time they open their mouths if you're listening for it. They don't think of you as an individual that is created by God with a purpose. This is usually the part of the video where I ask you to like this video and subscribe to my show and click the notification bell. Does that guarantee you're going to get notifications when I post new content? Honestly, the way that YouTube censors conservatives, I really doubt it. But you know what liking and subscribing does do, for sure? It ticks off the dark cyber overlords at Google when they see those likes and subscriptions despite shadow banning my conservative content. So you really should like and subscribe, if nothing else, just to stick it to them.